This monitor is unbelievable. Choosing a monitor, especially a budget price one, can be difficult as there's plenty of options available with very similar features and prices. What most people are not aware of is that there is very little difference between the actual panels being used in the majority of these monitors. That's because the list of manufacturers who make panels in this size is even smaller, leaving companies selling monitors like these with limited choices. And what we receive as a customer isn't necessarily going to be that different from one brand to the next, especially with budget price monitors. So when buying a budget camera monitor, we should look more closely at the operating system, build quality and after sale service. Yes, image quality is also important, but with budget monitors, a lot of them are just going to look similar. Normally what separates the budget monitors is their usability and operating systems because most of them have poor build quality, but not this one. This is the Shimble Memory One, a 2000 nit 5 inch HDR touchscreen monitor recorder. It's not made of plastic and it isn't going to break the bank to buy either at $280, which is about half the cost of a new Ninja 5 with a far, and I mean far superior build quality. I mean, look at this thing. The design language is beautiful and the machine work is meticulous. It's like an Apple product that's been CNC'd from a single piece of lightweight aviation aluminium. It weighs only 283 grams, but retains incredible strength and a durable feel about it. It's so well made, you won't need a cage. It's really rugged enough. However, without a cage, you'll be limited to two mounting points. One is on the bottom here and the other is on the right hand side. Unfortunately, the one on the right hand side is not anti-twist, but the mounting points themselves are machined into the aluminium housing. They're not pieces of brass hot pressed into plastic, so they won't snap over time like so many of my other monitors do here. And unlike the Ninja 5 design, you don't have to worry about running larger MPF batteries because they can take the weight without flexing. Another benefit of the aviation grade aluminium is its heat dissipation properties. The memory one is designed to not get hot, but Shimble still does give you control over the monitor fans, which barely make any sound. And when they do, they are much quieter than my Ninja 5. The Shimbo Memory One is just designed better. Made with better materials, has passive cooling fins, two fans and more venting points than the Ninja 5. And that comparison alone should be enough to make you avoid all Atomos products and just go with the Memory One. But here's another one, battery life. Let me show you a quick test of my Ninja 5 versus the Memory One. When set to peak brightness and recording, the Shimble Memory One destroys the Ninja 5 in a runtime use test. Even with its true peak brightness of 2000 nits, double that of the Ninja 5, the Memory One outlasts and outrecords the Atomos product. That's because the Memory One only draws around nine watts of power at peak brightness, which is just nothing. If we compare boot up times, the Shimble takes around 27 seconds to boot up while the Ninja takes around 17 and a good standard monitor takes roughly eight seconds. Only you can decide what is acceptable. Image latency is acceptable, but like all budget monitors, I wouldn't be relying on it for professional level focus pulling. For social media content, it'll be fine. And with the pinch to zoom feature, it'll help you in this regard. You don't have to toggle anything on or off. You can just pinch and zoom like an iPhone. I really like it. On the top is where you find the power switch and three function buttons. These buttons can be mapped to things like false color, zebras, or frame guides. On the left-hand side is your full-size HDMI loop in and out and DC power input. But unfortunately, the unit doesn't ship with a DC power adapter. On the right-hand side is the SD card slot for loading LUTs and media recording, plus a headphone jack for audio monitoring. Finally, on the bottom is a USB-C input for firmware updates. But if you're thinking you can bypass the lack of DC power supply by using the USB-C port here for power, you can't. 
And that's because the USB-C port is only for debugging the device, which is a real shame. This also means no cheap SSDs can be plugged into the memory one for better codec or quality recordings. You're stuck using SD cards. But Shimbol does provide a 32 gig one with the monitor. You can record the input signal as 8-bit MP4 H.264 video files in either LT, HQ or XQ. But even the XQ is limited to 8 bits, which for a monitor recorder is really limiting. Even my five and a half year old EOS R, which works great with the memory one, means you miss out on the external 10-bit log recording benefit. You can record it, it's just going to be an 8-bit. And in this scenario, a Blackmagic Video Assist is a far better option with its ProRes and RAW recording capabilities. But you also have to remember those capabilities come at double the cost for the hardware. And if you go with the Atomos product, additional fees for licenses to avoid different limitations. For example, the Memory One can record DMCA copyright protected material, whereas the Ninja 5 cannot. So both have their recording advantages, but the Memory One is just cheaper. But I must say, Shimbul's implementation of the FAT32 file system, meaning no single clip can exceed 3.85 gigs, is a head scratcher, as is the card slot being UHS-1 speed, because I don't see the point of having an external recording function that can't record better footage than my camera. And this is where a lot of budget monitors start to fall down, and this monitor unfortunately is no different. When recording, there is no way to bake in any of the 50 uploadable custom 33 by 33 by 33 show lights. They are viewable only. Now this can be a good or a bad thing. It depends on your project's workflow. But as of now, the memory one does not allow you to choose. Once you hit record, the memory one drops the show light from both the viewing screen and the recording and reverts back to your chosen log profile. There is also no recording indicators, zero information on disk space before, during, or after recording. You are literally flying blind if you are using this as your primary recorder, which is a real shame as everything else about this product is fantastic. Take for instance, the playback menu. Once you've laid down some takes, reviewing the clips is really, really easy. Just tap the icon at the bottom of the screen and you're good to go. There are ample features like false color, waveforms, targets, overlays, which unlike the Ninja 5, they can actually be used at the same time. Now, Memory One can also de-squeeze anamorphic footage, has great focus peaking with assignable colors and sensitivity, a monochrome mode, selectable gamma curves, PQ and HLG HDR, plus the ability to tune the screen's color temperature. So it is rich with features, and all these features work as good as any other monitor on the market. But what about image quality and usability? Because these are pretty important in a professional environment. Surprisingly, the image quality is pretty good. The screen is bright and the images appear very sharp. You can adjust contrast, saturation, hue and sharpness, but I was pretty happy with it straight out of the box. To me, the images don't appear to be artificially sharp, but that's really something that you will need to judge for yourself. You can change the brightness of the monitor via a percentage scale in the menu settings. However, if you adjust it too far, the image can start to look a little bit washed out. So yes, this is a daylight viewable 2000 nit monitor, but getting those nits comes at a cost. But for a 1920 by 1080 8-bit HDR dithered LCD panel, the overall quality is exceptional. So if we were to draw that features to build quality to price point pyramid, the memory one sits right about there. Its recording capabilities are seriously hamstrung, but it could save your bacon if you're in a bind. It's super easy to use, has great, and I mean great exposure tools that are accurate, but you don't get a lot in the box and most of what you get isn't worth it either. I do like the fact that Shimbal does include a screen protector, but for 250 euros, no included battery or DC power is a bit stiff. Fortunately, MPF batteries are dirt cheap on Amazon and at this price point, should we even care? And if you like this video, I'm sure you're going to like this one right here. Swipe up, tag your friends, like and subscribe, comment below. If I make this follow, don't let this flop, wait till the